Hi. Well, I've been looking around at pole laves, and as you know, I've already made a pole lave and put a video up. But here's a few clips of different pole laves for you to have a look at. And what a nice place this is. I'm at Bakewell today, up in Yorkshire. Or is it Derbyshire? It's Derbyshire, actually. <laughs> so there you are. That's Bakewell, and here come pole laves. Well, let's start with a fairly standard pole lave. This one's quite a popular design with the long pole and the sort of kinked legs, but it works very well. This one's interesting because it's actually got an adjustable end stop using a wooden ball there. And here, this is a live pole <laughs> recently cut from an elm tree. I like the leaves on it. This is a bowl turner's pole lathe and it has a special mandrel that holds the bowl onto the lathe and a swinging arm and a simplified treadle unit. It's a, it's a nice satisfying machine to use this one because you get lovely bowls coming off it and the tools are all hand forged from automotive springs or tool steel. This particular tool here in the picture has a kink in it and that's so it can get deeper into the base of bowls. All these tools have been handmade and they've been heat treated and ground round and they really are very effective at taking off nice little chamfers in use. Here's one which is quite a fine tool for making finer cuts. There are also larger ones for making more aggressive cuts. It's very satisfying actually making these tools and I will get a video up to actually show the making. Here's the larger tool and as you can see it's ground on both sides so it can cut on both sides. The wooden handles are just very simple sort of stumps. This is a medieval lathe for a journeyman that uses a bow stave as the pole, very light legs for transportation and it uses minimal metal so they're just the spikes to hold the wood and a bit of hinging and that's it. The legs in fact were probably made on site by the journeyman but it is a copy of an old medieval one and it actually worked very well. Here's an ingenious one, it's got little fingers as spacers for the tool rest. So to put the tool rest closer or further from the work, these little fingers pull it in and out. Simplified treadle here. And this one again has quite ingenious little arrangement for adjustment of the tool rest, these little spacers. And you simply drop them in and it puts the tool rest further or nearer to the work that you're turning. There's another little variant, which I, I quite liked actually. And here we have one with a, a natural finish. It's a log bed to it, log style uprights. And very ingenious arrangement. Again, little finger spacers for the tool rest, but also pegs to adjust the height of the tool rest as well. It's fun seeing all these different designs. Here's one with a stiffened crossbar at the top so that the whole thing can be made as light as possible. And in fact, the legs have been jointed into the base, into the bed of the lathe. And the whole arrangement was extremely light to move around, which is actually very useful if you're going into a wood. And this one finally has the pole underneath, so sort of a lower pole arrangement. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed seeing all these and perhaps gives you one or two ideas for when you have a go at making one yourself. I must say I found them useful just to see all the different variations.